Koba, planet of the apes, of the apes, of the apes. Koba is a fictional character in the Planet of the Apes franchise, portrayed by Toby Kebel. Following his brief introduction in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, where the character was portrayed by Christopher Gordon, Koba evolves into the main antagonist of the sequel, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and reappears posthumously as a central antagonistic presence in War for the Planet of the Apes. Koba's history of abuse and torment, leading him to becoming the primary antagonist of the series, has been cited as one of the best, most developed and sympathetic movie villains of the 2010s. Fictional Character Biography Rise 2011 First appearing in Rise, Koba is a bonobo which led a life full of abuse and torment at the hands of humans. He is picked up by the company Genesis to be part of a testing procedure for the ALZ-113 retrovirus developed by Will Rodman in hopes of curing Alzheimer's. Koba impresses Rodman enough to undergo the procedure for the testing. He is mocked briefly by Rodman's superior, Stephen Jacobs, by knocking on Koba's window as he is being strapped in for the procedure. Koba lies still long enough until he initiated a surprise attack that knocks chimp handler Robert Franklin's mask off. While Koba is sedated, Franklin has breathed in enough of the 113 virus to become contaminated, which would begin the simian flu outbreak that caused humanity to die out. After the procedure, Koba shows off his newfound intelligence by writing Jacob's name on a writing computer screen, taunting him while he plots his revenge. He is later freed from captivity by Caesar, and joins him in his attack on the Golden Gate Bridge. Koba is commanded by Caesar to lead an attack from above using the high wire supports. He notices that Stephen Jacob's helicopter has been attacked and has left him injured. Koba goes over to the wreckage of the helicopter and pushes it over the edge of the bridge, killing Jacob's. Koba follows Caesar and the rest of the apes to Muirwoods Park, where he attacks Rodman, but is stopped by Caesar before he could kill him. John 2014 Ten years later, at the start of dawn, Caesar and Koba are building their own civilization as humanity dies out. Koba becomes something of a brother to Caesar, and is idolized by Caesar's son Blue Eyes. Koba assists Caesar in saving Blue Eyes from a bear attack, and tells Blue Eyes not to be ashamed of his new scars from the encounter, as they show that he is strong. The next day, Koba heard a gunshot ring throughout the forest, and finds rockets. Sun Ash has been wounded by a group of humans with loaded guns. Caesar scares the humans into retreating and orders Koba to follow them, where he finds a small civilization of humans that have survived the outbreak. Koba insists on eradicating the humans for what they did to Ash and comes into conflict with Rocket for this, which insists that what happened was simply an accident. Caesar and the apes march to the humans' settlement and claim that they do not want war and that the humans must stay out of the apes' territory. Malcolm, one of the co-founders of the humans' settlement, returns to the woods to make peace with Caesar in order to gain access to a hydroelectric generator at a dam in the apes' territory. Caesar allows the humans to work in the dam, granted they work unarmed, which infuriates Koba. Koba fears that if the humans get more power, they will become more dangerous, to which Caesar replies that once they finish their work they will leave. Angered, Koba points out all of his scars, referring to them as human work. Caesar stands above Koba, which ashamedly seeks forgiveness from his king, and leaves. The next day, Koba sneaks off to San Francisco, claiming that he was off hunting. Koba observes that the humans have enough weaponry to wipe out the apes, and attempts to go and warn Caesar, but is caught by two human guards who threaten him. Koba plays dumb to catch them off guard and walks away. Koba returns to find that Caesar is at the dam with the humans. Koba arrives and attacks Malcolm's son, Alexander. Koba prepares to attack the boy again, but is interrupted by Morris. Koba shouts for Caesar to come out and confronts him about his tolerance of humans. Koba begins ranting that Caesar loves humans more than apes, and the two get into a fight where Caesar nearly beats Koba to death for his insolence. 
Caesar stops when he remembers his code that apes must not kill other apes and relents. Koba again begs for Caesar's forgiveness and secretly begins his plans to usurp him. Koba keeps the discovery of the guns a secret and warns Blue Eyes that he fears for Caesar's safety due to the humans remaining in the apes' territory. Koba returns to the armory and is caught by the same two humans again. Koba again plays dumb before stealing a M4 Aeon assault rifle from them. Koba treats the weapon like a toy to mess with the humans before executing them both. The power is restored and the humans celebrate with the apes. Koba kills the human carver, who had shot Ash and was flippant with the apes previously, and takes his hat and cigarette lighter as souvenirs. Koba returns to the village and has his followers set the village on fire. Koba then uses the rifle to assassinate Caesar, as they both stare at each other, seemingly killing him. Koba leaves the items he took from Carver at the scene of the shooting, framing him for killing Caesar and burning down the village. Koba wages war against the humans, claiming it to be in revenge for the death of Caesar and assuming leadership of the colony. Koba charges into war with the rest of the male apes, killing many humans and leading to the deaths of many apes. Koba takes over a tank, which was blocking the entrance to the human sanctuary, and storms the building. Inside, Koba demands that Ash kill an unarmed man. Ash refuses, stating such an act goes against Caesar's teachings, and Koba angrily drags him up a flight of stairs and throws him off a balcony to his death. Koba insists that Caesar is dead, and the apes are to follow him. Koba demands that all human survivors are rounded up and taken prisoner, claiming that they will know life inside a cage, and imprisons Caesar's remaining sympathizers in a bus. Blue Eyes learns that Caesar is in fact alive, and frees the humans and apes loyalists from captivity single-handedly. Caesar and Koba face off at the top of the high rise of the sanctuary. Koba taunts that the apes follow him now, and that he will win the war against the humans. Caesar claims that Koba was like a brother to him, while Koba retorts that Caesar is a brother to the humans, and that Koba will free apes from tyranny. Caesar retorts that Koba engaged this war due to selfish reasoning, and that he belongs in a cage. Koba kills several apes while attempting to kill Caesar, and injures Morris. Caesar furiously launches himself at Koba, and the two apes tumble down a platform, leaving Koba dangling off the edge. Koba hypocritically pleads for his life, reciting Caesar's rule of ape not kill ape. Caesar begins to pull Koba up before disowning him as an ape by saying you are not ape, and drops Koba to his death. Or 2017. By the beginning of war, Koba's actions have sparked a fully-fledged war between the apes and the human survivors, the latter of whom are being led by a ruthless militant named Colonel McCullough. At some point, Koba appears in a couple of flashbacks only as a hallucination to Caesar, after the latter accidentally kills Winter, who had joined forces with Colonel McCullough out of fear. Koba's apparition reminds Caesar of his rule not to kill apes, which he had just inadvertently broken. Morris compares Caesar to Koba at one point, citing his lust for revenge. Koba appears to Caesar again while he is being tortured, mocking Caesar and claiming that he cannot save the apes, and he should succumb to his injuries and join him in death. Caesar nonetheless succeeds in freeing the apes from human captivity, and later goes on to confront Colonel McCullough with the opportunity to execute him after asserting that he is becoming like Koba. In the end, though, Caesar renounces this by sparing his enemy. He instead watches Colonel McCullough commit suicide. However, while escaping with the apes and eliminating the pursuing humans, Caesar is mortally wounded, and he later dies at the end of the movie. Despite his death, however, Caesar has succeeded in saving the ape colony, and whatever left of Koba's cause was over at last. Production Despite not returning to direct the film, Rise of the Planet of the Apes director Rupert Wyatt expressed that he would like to see Koba become the main antagonist of the series for the future installments. Wyatt stated, Whereas the story of the first film plays out as a fairy tale, the next film will play out as a Shakespearean sophie drama where you'll have Caesar 
as the leader of this revolution, but Kobo would be the one leading his own troops wanting to wipe out humans in a genocide. But Caesar is more conflicted, and maybe Caesar needs Koba's assistance in terms of the conflict. The characters of Dreyfus, portrayed by Gary Oldman, and Carver, portrayed by Kirk Acevedo, are considered to be the human counterparts to Koba in the Dawn storyline. Kebel had expressed interest in reprising the role for war for the Planet of the Apes. Plans were considered to bring Koba back, as the ending of Dawn had left the character's fate ambiguous, with Koba's breathing being heard at the end of the film. Or screenwriter Mark Baumbach eventually decided against a physical return for Koba, and instead decided that a spiritual return would be more suitable for the storyline. Baumbach stated, if you stayed until the very end of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, you hear Koba's breathing. We did that to give us a tiny crack of a possibility that we could revive Koba if we wanted to. Very early on in spitballing, we realized there was nothing more to do with Koba, certainly nothing that would exceed what he had done in the last story. But Reception Kebel's performance as Koba in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes gained largely positive reviews. Many critics cited the character's sympathetic motivations due to his history of abuse as a powerful character arc. Mark Hughes from Forbes stated that Kebel's performance as Koba truly defined the film and compared Kebel's performance to that of Heath Ledger's as the Joker in The Dark Knight. Screen Rant ranked Koba as the second scariest science fiction monster of the 2010s, stating Toby Kebel's performance as the evil ape arguably surpassed Serkis at times. Filled with unpredictability, Koba was the perfect foil to Caesar, who was defined by clear-headedness and a strong moral center. Koba has been seen as one of the best movie villains of the 2010s as well as one of the best accomplishments in CGI and motion capture performances. Caesar is forced to take Koba's life at the end of the film, and thus breaking the rule of ape not kill ape, has been compared on many occasions to Batman being forced to kill Harvey Dent at the end of The Dark Knight, with the main protagonist being forced to break their fundamental moral code in order to restore peace. Koba has also been referred to on many occasions as being similar in nature to the relationship between the Joker and Batman, with the Joker often being referred to as the polar opposite of Batman, while also being his exact equal. Koba is seen as being Caesar's equal, while also being a dark reflection of everything Caesar stands for. Caesar stands for prosperity and forgiveness, where Koba stands for chaos and vengeance. Mark Hughes from Forbes made many comparisons between Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and The Dark Knight in his review of Dawn in one instance stating, in The Dark Knight, those voices willing to take a chance at being destroyed in order to refuse to act against the other side were able to ensure the survival of both fairies full of people trapped in the Joker's diabolical test. In Dawn Hughes stated earlier in the article while comparing the performances of Andy Serkis as Caesar and Kebel as Koba, Serkis provides such depth as an actor, he asserts himself even though the visual stylings of computer animation that completely transforms him into an animated ape. Here, he manages to rival his previous best performance as Gollum in equals equals references equals equals equals.